Hey everyone, uh, notes 3.11 are on systems of equations. Um, and a system of equation is just where we're gonna have two graphs on top of each other in the same grid, and we're gonna see where they intersect. So if you look right here, we have this graph right here, we've got veterans plan and we've got beginners plan, and we're gonna see where our plans are gonna intersect and what that tells us, okay? So, um, we're talking about gym membership plans. And the first question asks us, when will their plans be the same? So um, if you look, we have our, our vet beginner's plan and it follows along this line right here. And then we have our veteran's plan, which is following along this line right here. And if you notice, they have different prices for each month. So like for example, zero months is $40 for one plan, $60 for another plan. 12 months is $180 for one plan, $220 for the other plan. But there is one point in time where their plan values are the same, and that's here. So at four months, they will have the same price. Um, how much will they charge then? What will that price be? Well, we just have to look and see on our graph, and we can see that they're both going to be $100. So now it's asking you, when should someone choose veterans plan? So when is veterans plan gonna be the better option? So if we look here, we can see at the beginning, it's cheaper, the, the red plan is cheaper and it stays cheaper until this four months right here. Then at that point in time, it becomes more expensive because the cost is higher. So I would choose veterans plan if I'm gonna use the gym for less than four months. obviously assuming there's no commitment. And before the four months, the beginner's plan is not the better option, but after the four months, we can see beginner's plan is less expensive. So I would choose beginner's plan if I were to use the gym for more than four months as opposed to less than four months. And that's essentially what a system of equations is, but sometimes you're gonna have to meet, make these graphs on your own. So let's take a look at an example of that. So um, in this example, it tells us the administrators in your school are offering a detention buyout. So here are your offers. Your principal will offer you $15 per detention and your vice principal will offer you $10 per detention, but you have to pay an initial fee of $20. So let's create our table of values for each situation. So here we have our principal um, and we're gonna look at the number of detentions versus the cost in dollars. So if I have zero detentions with the principal, then I don't have to pay anything, there's no initial fee. If I have one detention, I'd have to pay $15. Two detentions would be $30, and three detentions would be $45. With the principal, same thing, we would be looking at the number of detentions and the cost right here, which is in dollars, and we know zero detentions uh, would still cost me $20. So if I'm gonna use the vice principal's uh, deal, then I know that I'm initially gonna pay $20. So I'd probably use this deal if I know I'm someone who's gonna get detentions a lot, right? Because it's less per detention. So eventually it's gonna become less expensive um, to use the vice principal's plan. But if I'm someone who doesn't really use, get detentions a lot, I probably would use the principal's plan because then I don't have to pay that initial fee. Anyways, um, the cost per detention goes up by $10 each time. So I would add 10 to this 20 to get $30. The second detention would be $40. The third detention would be 50. I'm just adding 10 each time. Okay, now we need to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. So let's talk about this in our chart. So here we have our two variables. And by the way, the titles of our charts will always tell us what our variables are. So they're the number of detentions and the cost. And because the cost depends on the number of detentions, the cost is the dependent variable and the number of detentions is the independent variable and we'll call this D. Now this is a variable because we don't know how many detentions there are, it's changing. And then the dependent variable is going to be the cost in dollars, and we'll call this C. All right, amazing. So now we have to complete the following table. What is the initial value? Well, the principal's 
telling us that they're going to charge $15 per detention, but there's no initial fee, so our initial value is $0. But the vice principal told us that we're, they're going to charge $20 plus an additional $10 per detention. So initially, if you're going to use the vice principal's offer, you're going to pay $20. What is that initial value telling us? It's how much you pretty much are going to pay to use that principal's option. Oh, you don't have to pay anything uh, to use the principal's option, uh, but you pay more per detention. If you're going to use the vice principal's option, you have to pay $20 up front, but you're going to pay less per detention. So let's figure out uh, what our rates of change are. So here, our rate of change is always something per something. And so here we know the principal's rate of change is going to be $15 per detention. And we know that the vice principal's rate of change is the $10 per detention. And literally, the rate of change is just telling us the cost per detention. So based on that, we can write our equation. We know for the principal that the cost is going to be equal to $15 per detention. Now we could add this plus zero, but that plus zero is not necessary, so I'm not going to add it in. For the vice principal, we know that the cost is um, an initial $20 plus $10 per detention. Or we could say that the cost is equal to $10 per detention, plus those $20. So now we need to graph each offer on the same coordinate grid. So we know that our independent variable is the number of detentions, and we know our dependent variable is the cost. And I'm gonna go up to 10 detentions. And so I know that 10 detentions for the principal would be $150, because I can just multiply 15 by 10. And I know for the vice principal, it would be 10 times 10, which is 100, plus that initial $20. So I know the highest point for these 10 detentions will be $150. So um, I'm going to go out to like 200. And since there's 20 blocks, then each block will be worth 10. So um, for the principal, we know that the initial value is equal to zero. So zero dollars for zero detentions. We know one detention is $15. Two detentions are $30. Three detentions are $45. Four detentions are $60. And I would just keep going with those values. Then I would connect my points here and put an arrow at the end, okay? So this right here is the principal's option. Now let's do the same thing for our vice principal. So the vice principal starts at $20, and we know we're paying $10 per detention. So one, one detention is $30, two detentions are $40, three detentions are 50, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and connect these points. And we know this is the vice principal's option. Quick note. You can also use this chart right here. You've got this chart and this chart to help you do your graph, okay? It helps you to uh, figure out where your points should go. Okay, so in this question, it says that Bob owes two detentions. Whose deal should he take? So let's take a look at two detentions on our graph. So I'm gonna go to two on my graph and I can see that for the principal, I'd be paying $30. And for the vice principal, I'd be paying $40. So I clearly would rather use the principal's option. So he should use the principal's deal because it costs less. But one quick note is that I didn't actually have to figure out what the values are. Just by looking at my graph, I can see the principal's number is less than the vice principal's number because it's lower on my graph. So let's use that strategy to help us answer Cassie's question. So for Cassie, um, she owes six detention. So I'm gonna go to six on my graph right here and I can see that the vice principal is lower than the principal's graph at this point in time. So she should choose the vice principal's option. Again, because it costs less. Notice how we didn't actually have to figure out what the costs were. We just were able to look and see which one was lower. 
So for the last question, it says that Carl owes four detention. So I'm going to go to four right here. And if you can see, that's where they cross with each other. So which deal should he take? Well, it doesn't matter. He could use the principal or the vice principal's deal because it's going to be the same cost for both deals. It doesn't matter. Both deals cost the same. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in class. Bye.